We all know by now that in a few days we're going to get some type of decision from LeBron James about whether or not he's going to opt out of his contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers and hit the open market once again. And it would seem like we're due for the decision part three. Oh boy. But honestly, as much as some of us, myself included, might suffer a little bit from LeBron fatigue, it is a major storyline and going to be the preeminent storyline when the most dominant player in your game, the best player in your game, hits the open market. It could potentially be landscape changing for the league. So of course, it is going to dominate the headlines. It is a matter of fascination. And when you look at LeBron James and where he is at the stage of his career, where he is in his life, talking about a guy that's been to eight straight NBA finals, he returned back home to Cleveland, took them to four straight finals, including winning a championship, coming down, coming back from a 3-1 deficit in 2016 against the Warriors to do so. Now you look at it and you say, what's that next phase of LeBron's career? Is it going to be championship chasing? Is it going to be legacy mode? What's it going to be? So we're going to start talking about, and have been talking about, we'll continue to talk about until the decision is actually made, where will LeBron James play next season? You hear all types of names thrown out there. You might hear like, oh, Dwayne Wade plays is back in Miami. Maybe he'd want to go back to Miami. Does anybody see that happening? Oh, somebody like the Chicago Bulls has a second most cap room. Does playing with Larry Markinen, Zach Levine give a Bron Bron a bone bone? I don't think so. You're going to hear talk about the San Antonio Spurs might be interested. They can't even keep Kawhi Leonard happy. Why in the hell would LeBron James want to go and play somewhere where the best player on the team who barely played this past season is so eager to get the hell out of Dodge and then go play for the type of coach he's never played for and Greg Popovich? He might think that sounds like a really good idea, but the truth is it would be potentially a disaster, a clash of personalities and egos because Popovich is not going to put up with that crap like LeBron uh, likes to do. And LeBron is used to being able to do things a certain type of way, and he's kind of earned that to a certain degree. But Pop's going to be like, I got five rings, you got three, bitch, sit the hell down. It would be a disaster. And then when you look at the cap space situation and everything else, on top of the Kawhi Leonard thing, Spurs just not happen. You're going to hear, oh, he's going to talk to Boston, he's going to talk to Golden State. He talks to Golden State, what are they going to do? End of discussion. You look at the Boston Celtics. If you're Boston at this point in time, why would you feel the need to dramatically shake up the way you do things when you've got a young core nucleus in place and you've got two star players on big contracts going into this upcoming season and Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving that weren't there for you come playoff time and Hayward wasn't there for you pretty much at all during the regular season. You'd have to feel like you have a championship team in place right now. Why would you want to bring in LeBron and totally shake up everything when you potentially don't need to. It just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. And then you look at some of the other options, like you even are going to hear about the Houston Rockets, because one of his best buds, Chris Paul, is there. This is a team that was really close to usurping the Warriors in the Western Conference. They've got James Harden. You know, they could have Chris Paul back. Maybe they find a way to keep Clint Capella. But why would LeBron want to go to the Western Conference? Why would LeBron potentially want to take a lot less money to do so without any guarantee automatically that they would be able to beat the Golden State Warriors? Because in order to bring him in and keep Chris Paul, and you have James Harden, massive contract there, it means you probably have to let Clint Capella go unless LeBron's going to take such a ridiculously sizable pay cut that we just don't see happening, nor should he have to take at this stage of his career. It's ridiculous that somebody like LeBron would have to consider taking a massive pay cut to make something like that happen. He should be a guy that is paid like the best player in the league like he is. That simple. So the Houston Rockets team is largely like a pipe dream. And even if you're James Harden, why the hell would you defer LeBron at this point in time? That's your team. That's your organization. And you could feel like if Chris Paul didn't go down with the hamstring injury like Porcelain Paul and Ceramic Chris is known to do every year in the playoffs, it's always something. You could feel like, hey, we might have beat the Warriors. Hey, we might have won the NBA championship. We might be primed to do it next year. Why the hell would we want to bring in LeBron and potentially have to spend a whole year adjusting to everything? Why would you? So you got like three contenders, and even in that case, talking about LeBron services, you look at the 76ers. You know, from a LeBron standpoint, is Philly a city he really wants to be in? Is that a city he really wants to live in? 
if he's talking about he doesn't particularly like Houston and those are some of the reports, why the hell would he like Philly? Philly, who could be very harsh. Philly, where there would be a lot of pressure. Philly, where he'd have to figure out how he's got to fit in with Simmons and Embiid. And then you look at it, can you count on Simmons and Embiid long-term from a health standpoint? Simmons made it through this past season relatively unscathed, but Embiid, it seems like it's always something. And even with that case, even coming in with that big three, does that automatically mean, yes, you're in the Easter Conference, it might make the Easter Conference favors, but is that still enough to beat Golden State? Probably not. So if you're championship chasing... Philadelphia, it might be an awkward fit, too, in terms of LeBron playing on the ball. Is he really going to want to defer at this stage of his career to Simmons and play off the ball as much as it would be required in order to make it work? I just don't see it. So to me, there's really two viable contenders here. It's the Lakers and the Cavs. The Cavs and the Lakers. That's what it comes down to to me at this point, unless something unforeseen happens. And it could. Unless somebody makes a whole set of moves that we don't see happening yet. It's the Lakers and the Cavs. Those are the two contenders. When you look at the Lakers, they've got a young core of talent there with Ingram, with Kuzma. You throw in maybe Lonzo Ball if he wouldn't be traded in part to facilitate LeBron coming because I don't know that LeBron would want to deal with Lamar in his mouth. But when you look at it, let's say LeBron says, I love L.A. I've got homes there. I think that's a place that my kids could do well in their middle school and high school years. I want to go there. If you're LeBron, why in the hell would you want to go to the Western Conference? To me, that just makes absolutely no sense. Even if you say, well, they can bring in a second star, it's probably not going to be Kawhi Leonard because I'm not sure that the Spurs are going to want to trade him there. Then who's it going to be? You get Chris Paul to leave Houston and he joins you in L.A.? So that way you can wait for the inevitable May injury from Chris? Then what are you looking at? You're looking at LeBron and a bunch of young kids that are a couple years away from being the type of players he would demand and need in order to contend for a championship. Or if you bring in a Paul George, okay, so then you've pretty much addressed the front court with LeBron and Paul George, but even then, who's your post player? Then who's your back court going to be? You've got Kuzma, you've got Ingram. Are you going to try and play Ingram at the two? How's that all going to work? And then when you think about it from LeBron's standpoint, from a legacy perspective, the Lakers are one of the marquee franchises in NBA history. Why in the hell would you want to go play in the shadow of Magic Johnson and Kobe Bryant? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me from a legacy standpoint. It also doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me from a championship building standpoint. If you want to go to L.A. so bad and you want to build a legacy, go to the Clippers and get them to the NBA Finals. That will help your legacy. Going to the Lakers and getting somebody else to join you and trying to do another whole super team crap on a marquee franchise on Magic and Kobe's organization is not the way to get it done. And then you got the Cavs. Like, it's easy to talk about the Cavs and what they didn't have and this and that and everything else because it's a valid point. But you're still talking about a team that LeBron has won an NBA championship with. He has taken to four straight NBA finals. Yes, they're in a bad, bad way salary cap-wise now, but it won't be that way forever. And this is a team that just added a top 10 pick in Colin Sexton. This is a team that could maybe facilitate something like bringing a Kemba Walker in from Charlotte. And you might say, ooh, well, here's the thing. Cleveland provides him the best chance at protecting his legacy because when you talk about ego and LeBron is clearly in legacy mode based off the way he's talked about himself for the past couple of years, and that's fine. He could sit there and talk about, look at me, look at all the wonderful things I do. He can have everybody else talk about how great it is and how it's the organization's fault, how it's the players around him fault that he's not winning these championships when he's going to the finals in Cleveland, and he looks better by default. Cleveland can also pay him the most money. They can give him the most money for a Supermax deal if that's what he so desired. He would still be able to stay in a place like Cleveland that he's comfortable with, that he's familiar with, while it's not L.A. He is treated like a god there because he ultimately, the chosen one, the prodigal son, came back home and delivered a championship to a success star city like Cleveland. And even when you talk about how bad the Cavs were this past year, they still made it to the NBA Finals. Yes, they got swept, and yes, it's this, and yes, it's that. But LeBron's never been better. And as far as the team around him goes, they were still good enough to get to the NBA Finals. 
And who's to say that they wouldn't get to the NBA Finals again this upcoming year? Like, to me, going out to L.A. takes an incredible leap of faith. And even in that case, when you talk about legacy and championship chasing, I don't know that it makes the most sense. Legacy-wise, you're going to where the house that Magic and Kobe built. You're just another cog in the wheel there. You also talk about L.A. from a championship chasing standpoint. Golden State has their core entirely intact this year and might going forward, especially if they extend Klay Thompson long term. You're not beating them, even if Chris Paul or somebody else does join you in L.A. That's not happening. You might not even get to a position where you can even play them in the conference finals, let alone get to the NBA finals. And then you got to worry about Houston. I'm sorry, but... James Harden, Clint Capella as your top two with the system that Houston runs and the surrounding talent is going to be a LeBron and Chris Paul team in the playoffs, in large part because Ceramic Chris is going to get hurt in May. It happens every freaking year. LeBron could very well end up in Los Angeles. The bright lights of that big city, a city he loves, might be too appealing to him. The thought of bringing championship glory back to the Lakers might be too appealing for him to pass up. But to me, I still point back to, even though right now it looks bad, and even though right now you sit there and say, there's no way he's coming back to Cleveland. The writing's on the wall. It feels like this. It feels like that. Everything is automatically pointing to Lakers. Maybe not so fast. The best thing for his legacy is to stay in Cleveland. The best thing for him financially is to stay in Cleveland. The best thing from a championship chasing standpoint and at least having the path to the NBA Finals being more clear is staying in Cleveland. Maybe a Philadelphia or somebody else gets in the mix here, but to me right now, it's Lakers and it's Cavs and that's that. The Lakers might still be the favorite because they have the cap space to bring in two max level type of players and maybe somebody else would want to saddle up and join them in L.A. like a Paul George, like a Chris Paul. But even in that case, is that going to be enough? And right now the simple answer is no. LeBron would take less money to have a harder path to the NBA Finals, a destination he might not even reach in the organization uh, that is still dominated by the legacies of Magic Johnson and Kobe Bryant. To me, the answer is obvious. In spite of the fleas that the organization has, in spite of the fact that he hates Dan Gilbert with a passion, he doesn't really like Kobe Altman, the general manager, even though the talent around him is not great, it is still inherently more sensible for LeBron James to stay in Cleveland, even if he took like a two-year deal with an option after the first year. He still get paid a shit ton of money more in that season or two than he would anywhere else. And he can allow Cleveland to see what they could do to try and build a better team around him. But even if they don't, it helps LeBron's legacy because next year you come back, you say, oh my God, the guy stayed even though he could have went to L.A. And he's led this team back to the NBA Finals and they're not a whole lot different than the previous year's version. Oh my God, he's special and it's great. From an ego standpoint, the answer is obvious. From a legacy standpoint, the answer is obvious. From a easier path to the NBA Finals, the answer is obvious. From a financial standpoint, the answer is obvious. All signs point to returning to Cleveland. I'm not saying he will, but I really feel like he should. What say you?